Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Girl Meets World Season 1, Episode 11, Girl Meets World of Terror, and this was a Halloween special. Special episode was on a Thursday, they're not probably ever going to mention this episode again, but um, I was expecting this episode to just be a silly episode because one, it's on, you know, a Thursday and versus a, a, when it's usually on Fridays. I didn't think this episode would be that big or anything. It ended up being a really good episode, though. I don't know if it was, like, best episode of the season or anything, but I really enjoyed this episode. One of the things I really enjoyed about this episode was it was very much styled like a Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Um, you know how in The Simpsons they did Treehouse of Horror... And basically, you know, Treehouse of Horror would be, um, you know, where they have three different storylines. You know how they do that every single season? Yeah, well, Girl Meets World ended up um, doing that um, in this episode. And I thought that was very well done, in my opinion. I thought they did a very good job with that. And I really enjoyed that they did that. So let's just get to the episode. Augie as a host. Augie hosts this um, the episode. So funny. He was basically a cross between Hitchcock and Dracula, um, and uh, it was really funny to watch. And Topanga comes in, asks him what he's doing, to come to dinner, and it was really funny to watch. You know, they end, there are so many times where they break the fourth wall in this episode. He's just so funny. And um, Topanga leaves, Augie introduces us to the first story, and lets us know that all these stories are about fear. And then the episode is divided into three stories. And I thought all three of these stories were very interesting. Um, the first one was Farkle's fear. And Farkle, we find out, is terrified of softball, which um, is interesting. Now, he's terrified so much that he wants Corey to write him a note for gym class. He's more so ter He's also terrified that Maya's going to hurt him with the ball um, because Maya's the pitcher. And meanwhile, Lucas is a catcher, and Riley's the third base, but she's also acting like a cheerleader. So Farkle's trying to convince his coach not to play softball. He tells him he's afraid of getting hit by the ball and public humiliation. And the coach tells him to stop worrying. Maya throws the ball, misses, scares Farkle more. And um, then we get a very interesting scene here. I thought this was uh, pretty funny. Riley ends up flirting with Lucas and asks him what hand the mitt goes on. Maya's very impressed by this. Riley then slaps Lucas's ass, and she's just like, oh, I meant to do that. And I thought that was funny. I was like, wow, Riley, like, definitely is taking a lot from mine. That was really funny to watch. I don't know if they're trying to show that Riley and Lucas are getting closer to getting together, but I feel like that scene, it confirms that they will eventually be together. That was a very Corey and Topanga kind of moment. That is something that definitely Corey would have done to Topanga, definitely. So that very much reminded me of that. So Farkle asks the coach, why does he have to be up? The coach tells me he has to because it's his turn and he's the gym teacher. Farkle goes up at bat, and at first he tries to ruin Lucas's game. And, you know, Lucas says he's an evil genius and everything. The lights go out, music plays. This is, like, throughout the whole episode. My only complaint of this episode was there was too much of this, like, creepy music and lights flashing. I thought it was well done, but there were some parts that I just, I didn't like that so much. I thought that was, that got kind of annoying after a little while. I understand what they were trying to do. I have no issue with it. I'm just saying after a while, it got a little bit annoying. Just a little bit bothersome. Not really by much, but just a little bit bothersome in my opinion. So, then um, it's time for, you know, Farkle to go up at bat again, and Maya's about to throw the ball. However, Lucas tells her he wants to take over and tells Maya to play shortstop. So Farkle tells Lucas to take it easy. He throws it, he pegs it right at him intentionally. Farkle goes down, and he asks Lucas why he did that, and Lucas says he did it to purposely show him that there's nothing to be afraid of, and he asks Farkle how he feels, and Farkle says he feels great. Lucas asks him if he's up for trick-or-treating tonight, and he says yes, and Coach tells him to go again. And Farkle brings, you know, Farkle says, bring it, Maya throws the ball, and Farkle ends up hitting a home run. So that was the end of that story. I thought the first story was well done. Probably, um, I enjoyed the, the first story. I thought it was well done. It was short, but it was a well done story. It was cool to see Farkle actually have a fear. And again, I liked Farkle more in this episode than in the last episode. Again, I was not a fan of them portraying Farkle as a villain. And again, still in this episode, they are still portraying him as a villain. I mean, Lucas referred to him as an evil genius, which I don't think that's true, but I, I overall enjoyed that story. 
So then we get another introduction with Augie, you know, not not much to say there. Um, and then we get the next story is Riley's here, which was probably my favorite of the three because I loved the message in this story. I love the message. I thought it was really well done. And honestly, if they were to pick a storyline to be the main storyline and just cut out the other two stories, this one was probably the strongest in my opinion. I just thought it was really well done. Basically, this storyline was about how Riley and Maya always, every year, they have the tradition of having a Halloween sleepover. However, it always ends up being at Riley's house, and every time um, that Riley goes to Maya's house, she ends up leaving abruptly. Corey has to come get her in the middle of the night, and Riley, you know, Maya says she wants to do it at her house this time. She wants to have the sleepover at her house, and... Riley's a little bit worried because, again, she's terrified of her house, and Maya tells her that this time, that's not happening. She is staying there for one whole night, and, um, you know, she's not allowed to leave in the middle of the night, and she's there sleeping there tonight all night. And Corey tells her to overcome this fear so he can sleep, and Riley asks Corey if he will drive her. Corey then disappears, and Riley gets worried, but Maya takes her to her house and Maya asks Riley how it's going so far. You can see that Riley is very scared, especially when Riley meets her ferret, Ginger. I thought that was funny. Um, so, you know, that happens. And Maya's about to turn off the lights. Riley tells her she doesn't like it completely dark. Maya tells her there's nothing to be scared of. Turns off the lights, and Riley sees a shadow of a bunny, but it turns out to be a shadow of the new bunny mart in town. Um, and Riley tries to sleep. She sings to herself. She's like, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. There's something else in the room. I thought that was really funny. She's like, it's gonna eat me. And I thought that was really funny when she did that. Um, and it actually turns out to be Maya's grandmother. Played by the amazing Charlotte Ray. I have a soft spot for the facts of life. That is a show that my mom loves, okay? That's not a show that I introduced myself to. My mom loves that show. I've seen it with her. I love that show. Such a great classic show. And Charlotte Ray, just, you gotta love her. You know, I mean, she's... She's like 80-something, 90-something, and but she still holds her own, and she did a great job in this episode. I thought she was really funny. Um, Riley asks her how she's been. She tells her she's fine and things like that, and she goes away, and Maya then tells Riley she wants her to close the curtain because it'll be easier for her to sleep, and Maya's about to close the curtain, but um, Riley at this point is about to call Corey, but Maya tells her she's not doing it this time. She's making it through the whole night to stay at her house and be more comfortable, and Riley tells herself it's just the shadows. They both see something. Maya and Riley both scream. They open the curtains, and it turns out to be Lucas and Farkle. They, as I said, you know, and I like that they connected this to um, the first story. There's actually a part in the very beginning of the story where you see Farkle, like, being very triumphant over his win of overcoming his fear of the softball. I thought that was really funny. Um, so, you know, Lucas and Farkle are trick-or-treating. And Riley asked them why they would do this in the middle of the night. It turns out it's actually a quarter after seven. And Maya just did this to put herself out of her misery. Because basically she wanted to do this with, you know, she wanted to do this to show Riley to overcome her fear. And it really shows how great of a friend Maya is. And I thought that was really well done. And then um, Gammy comes in. And we're going to call her Gammy because that's what Maya calls her. And she says she hears boys. She's like, I hear boys. Are there boys in here? I thought that was really well done. And she, and then she sees Farkle and Lucas and is cheerful. And after that, Farkle calls her a scary old lady. Um, it seemed like he was trying to, I don't want to say flirt with her, but like he then asked Lucas a very weird question if he knows how to attract scary old ladies. So I don't know if Farkle has an attraction to that, but that was like, I, that was just weird. I don't know what to say there really about that. Um, so they head back out to Trick or Treat and they leave and Riley tells Maya she doesn't need to close the curtain because she tells Maya she was just scared of Farkle until he took his mask off. And I really love what Riley says next. She tells Maya that you really don't know the whole world till they take their mask off. And they look out the window and Maya tells her it's actually nice out there. She didn't even notice. Maya tells her they can go to bed now. Riley asks, can they stay up a while? Maya asks, she's still scared. And Riley says, she's not. She just wants to see what happens next. And I thought that was a good way to end that storyline. Again, out of the three storylines, I thought that one was the strongest. The third storyline with Augie, I thought this was well done. It made the episode a little bit weirder than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was cool because it shows a little child's fear. Um, you know, I thought that was well done. In my opinion, though, what could have, what should have been, this should have been Riley's fear, Augie's fear, and Corey's fear. That's what this should have. Well, we know what Corey's fear is because we've seen them Boy Meets World, but 
I feel like this storyline was probably my least favorite of the three. I just was not. I like the other two better. And it wasn't that I didn't like this one. It was just this one was probably the weakest. Um, this one's all about how Augie, you know, it's a thing that a child's always afraid of. Augie's afraid of um, be there being a monster under his bed. And I thought this was just going to be something where he thinks about it and, um, um, you know, he's with Mr. Googly. But Mr. Googly is snatched away by something under the bed and he finds new stuff am animal Mrs. Blobbly. And it turns out there actually is a monster under his bed. He gets back, but the monster keeps yelling at him, saying he's scaring him. And um, now this did remind me of one thing. There's actually a book I used to re read when I was a kid. I don't remember what it is. I think it's called The Monster over the bed it portrays this monster creature and how he is afraid of um the person it reminded me very much of that because that book interprets how a monster interprets how a monster feels about uh, you know a human and it shows that this the monster is actually scared of augie i thought that was definitely interesting there and um you know, I thought that was funny. So, Augie's at first scared by this monster, but Corian's man come in, tell him there's nothing there. And Augie actually ends up bonding well with this monster. You know, he tells the monster that he's right uh, next to him. The monster's right next to him. Augie tells him he can't be hiding under people's beds. He tells him it's his home. He's been there every night. He ends up not being scared by him, laughs, but the monster tells him he has to leave. Um, and the monster gives him back all of his stuff that he thought was lost, the monster had, and, um, basically, and, you know, Augie tells him he can't leave because he's just a friend, but the monster tells him he can't leave because he's a monster, and he then shows Augie all the stuff he thought he lost, the monster isn't playing with it when Augie's been in school, and I really like this next quote. This was probably my favorite part of this story. Um, the monster tells him he has to go. And I knew he was going to say this because I knew that's where the story was leading to. He tells him he's a little boy and little boys grow up. So that was basically the message of the third story was growing up. And at the end of the episode, they pretty much sum up what the episode was all about. You know, Augie tells the audience goodnight, how everyone is scared of something and everything is not as it seems. The ending with the twist with him, it turning out to just be the monster, that was really stupid, honestly. I was not that huge of a fan of that little twist of it turning out to be actually be the monster that's doing this. I thought that was just stupid. I understand that it was just trying to be funny, but, like, it was corny, okay? It was, it was funny, but, like, I don't know. I wasn't a fan of that, the ending of the episode. I thought it was cute, but other than that, this episode was really well done. I really enjoyed the message of it, um, especially with... Riley storyline again I did think that one was the strongest in the fact that I really like the storyline of you don't know and I think the reason Riley was so scared of Maya's family life is because she knows how Maya's family life is so she was worried that the city was going to be just like you know Maya's house was going to be like that I was expecting Maya's house to be like very you know very like disheveled very um just not in a very good condition at all but it ended up being in a very good condition I thought that was interesting um, Farkle's storyline, I liked. I thought it was well done. Probably could have been cut out of the episode, though, honestly. Farkle's storyline could have probably been cut out. I understand they wanted to show three storylines, but honestly, if I were to do this episode again, I probably would have just done Riley's storyline. I felt like Riley's storyline was strong enough to be one episode. It should have been just Riley's storyline. I'm fine with the other two storylines, but I really would have just wanted Riley's storyline because that one was the best, in my opinion. And that was the one that I think had the biggest impact on me out of the three, in my opinion. That was the best one. Um, Augie's storyline, yes, it was cute, but honestly, that was just like... It, it's, it's something that I expected for them to do, and you know, Riley Maya's was a little bit more untraditional, while Augie's kind of made it a little bit weirder, which I like, but the thing is, it was kind of silly, just very silly, very just weirdly done. Farkles was also weirdly done, but that's just because Farkles a weird character. I will say that I thought the weird thing about this episode was that Lucas ended up being the one to actually help them out with their fears, you know, because like in the first storyline, he helped out Farkle. Second storyline, he helped out Riley. I mean, that was weird. I thought that was weird with Lucas. Do you guys feel Lucas and uh, Riley are getting a little bit closer? That scene with Riley and Lucas um, playing softball, I thought that shows they're getting closer. Also, love the costumes they were wearing. Costumes were really funny. I loved um, what they were wearing. Um, they were sort of like medieval costumes. I thought that was funny to watch. Um, I, I enjoyed the costumes overall. Um, 
August Matora, oh my god, this kid's just so fantastic. He does better and better every episode. It was great to see him parody Alfred Hitchcock in those, like, I love when we, when we go to the second sketch and you see Augie doing the famous, you know, pose that's like this. It's like, um, it's like this with Alfred Hitchcock. I can't do it right now, but you guys know what I'm talking about. That sort of pose with Alfred Hitchcock. I love seeing him do that, the famous Alfred Hitchcock, um, you know, um, appearance. I thought that was really funny. When he was pairing Dracula, that was really funny. I love the side storyline with Topanga being upset that he didn't come to dinner. I thought that was really well done. I love the breaking of the fourth wall. The only thing I didn't like was really the ending with the monster. I thought that was just kind of cheesy. I understand it's a kid's show. They just want to be funny, but I just thought that was a little bit cheesily done, and that's really my only problem with this episode. But this episode I thought was really fun. It was a fun Halloween episode. I don't know if they're going to do one like this again, but I'd like them to. I like seeing them do these uh, sort of three, you know, split storyline type of episode. I thought that was really cool. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. I'll see you guys. Probably, this was probably, I'd say, probably the fourth best of the season, I gotta say. Right next to um, Girl Meets 1961. Girl Meets Maya's Mother, Girl Meets, um, you know, Girl Meets Smackle, Girl Meets Father, and then probably Girl Meets, um, and then probably now, Girl Meets World of Terror. Um, that's been my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in my next video, which will be my review for tonight's episode of The Nick. By the way, guys, How to Get Away with Murder, I just want to talk about that. That is going to be a show that I'm going to be reviewing the season of because... It's a lot like The Blacklist. It's a procedural show. It's not a show that has a lot going on in it, right? You know, there's stuff going on, but it's very much like The Blacklist. It's very slow moving. And so because of that, I'm going to be, I will continue to watch it. Don't worry, I'll continue to watch it, but I'll review it um, as a season. When when the first half of the season's over, I'll review it. And that's what I'll do with How to Get Away Murder. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye.